What makes exhibiting in Sculpture by the Sea Cottesloe special? People can actually move around the works and interact with them, quite often you know, able to lay their hands on them, feel the kind of temperature of the metal, the, the texture of the timber, whatever it might be. It reaches such a wide audience for Perth and that is a very, very valuable thing for both myself as an artist exhibiting in the exhibition, but also for Perth as a wider community as well. In my practice I'm uh, predominantly interested in working with the natural environment. However, in this work I've deviated a bit from that subject matter, but similar themes run through this work. Um, delicacy, fragility and femininity are uh, ideas I always chase in my work. She is inspired by the veiled uh, marble busts of artists such as Bernini, and I've always been fascinated with how they were able to take a really hard substance um, in marble and make it look delicate and translucent. And behind me is the installation, the Desert Island. Being an architect's studio, we always make buildings and spaces that people interact with. This is also the inspiration here, to make something that people can share and be a part of. The experience will change during the day based on how the sun is and like how many people is here. This is my fifth time at Sculpture by the Sea exhibiting. The most important part about this work for me is actually my thoughts when I was constructing this is about women and children who endured the journey coming here from England to Australia. They were very young. The youngest female that was a prisoner on the ships was a 14 year old girl. I really wanted to highlight the um, treacherous journey of 11 months on a boat arriving here in these harsh conditions with no parents so I have tried to keep the boat fairly feminine to represent women and children. I'm Harshwardhan. I'm from India. The sculpture is titled Column of Sound. It's a translation of sound into visual form. It's actually a memory of the sound. For me, I think we can aim to really understand sound in a much interesting way. Like, can we really engage with these mediums in a more different manner than we already do? Can we touch sound? Can we feel sound? and it's a great platform to kind of be here and then really be able to kind of share these knowledge banks that people have based on their experience. So I'm really glad I'm here with Sculpture by the Sea. There's just a hugely growing awareness of the plastics in the ocean and the microplastics. I've been collecting these green and blue bottles for three years. There's over a thousand bottles in this work and if you were to go down to the shops to buy that, it's over $6,000 worth of plastic materials in this work. They're a single-use item, but actually they're quite valuable and they're actually having huge impact in our environment. I grew up in the wheat belt in Western Australia. I work in a lot of different mediums. I wanted a tower, I love these towers. It's part of the South Fremantle Hamilton Hill power system, but I do love this constructivist kind of reality to these towers anyway. And of course they're going. These are historical objects now, you know, like, is this art or is it sculpture? Well, my name is Tzadok Ben David. I'm Israeli artist, but I live in London for many years. I uh, educated and uh, opened my first studio there. The artwork called Big Boy, and it's part of my recent installation named people I saw but I never met. I think uh, the setting of the place is amazing. I didn't plan it to be here. I would have thought it would be on a lawn, on the grass, but when you walk, of course, this is ideal background. And as a silhouetted piece, um, you don't want anything in the background that may distract. The piece is very lacy, it's got a lot of details and uh, should be seen either against the sky or against the sea. I am a Wajak Noongar woman, which is the Aboriginal people from the Perth area and surrounds. My inspiration for this piece was of the shelters that Aboriginal people used for thousands of years, they're called the Maya Maya. Yeah, and I'm just so happy to be part of Sculpture by the Sea, so this is my third time. And like we're under the she-oak trees, which is Aboriginal women would sit under them because all the needles would make a soft cushioning. So it was a good place to sit and breezes flow through and even now as you sit under she oak you can hear the whispering of the women's voices as they you know like from because there's lots of green around this the grass the trees the ocean here at sculpture by the sea you have this tremendous venue and this enormous backdrop so you have the possibility of showing things on all different scales to compete with 
this vast Indian Ocean and the beautiful site here at Cottesloe. I'm thinking about very simple patterns in my work and responding to the landscape. I've been very much influenced by the nature, by the, the art here in Australia, and by all of the wonderful people I meet. One of the great things about Sculpture by the Sea is you interact with all of the locals who've just been very friendly and opening up their uh, homes to me. I go and visit a lot of the local artists here and I'm very much influenced by all of that. So it's a pleasure to come here and be by the surf and you know all of that kind of gets into the work so it's very meaningful to me in that way. When an artist chooses to make works for the outdoors your audience is everybody. The gallery is the world and the work simply has to live in that world and interact within it and of course the viewers become part of that as well.